Well, Bilderberg assumed that name in 1954 at their first meeting as Bilderberg at the Bilderberg Hotel. It's a little bit like Shakespeare's As You Like It. They say to Shakespeare, what do you want to call this book? And he says, As You Like It, meaning whatever you want to call it. And they thought it was dictation, so one of the, uh, his plays is called As You Like It, and the title has nothing to do with the play. So that's how the Bilderberg came by their name. Now, they had been meeting for half a century, the moneyed class had been meeting. But they decided they have to meet systematically every year, uh, well planned in advance, in, uh, in addition to maybe uh, other smaller meetings throughout the year. Sure this is the right turn, Jim? No. Let's see if it really starts. Let's see if it really starts. This is the global government. They are setting the world agenda. Inside right now, they're deciding on whether or not there will be a war with Iran. They're deciding whether or not taxes will increase, whether oil prices will be suppressed are increased. There are, uh, there's much more on the agenda that we'll be finding out in the fullness of time. But those are three items that are heavy on their list this year. This is Jim Tucker, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Yes. 27 years covering these crooks. Mr. Tucker, God bless pleasure you, to meet you. The media said he was crazy and didn't exist. You. Now we forced him. 120 of the world's most powerful men. Heads of state from Europe, high officials, United States government, Treasury, White House, state, defense. They're setting the world agenda now. The reason they want secrecy is because they're doing evil. Evil is done under the cover of darkness. Good works are done in the sunshine. Hi, how you doing? Good. Can you get off the property, please? Well, 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 Jim, property. Jim has some questions for you. I need you to move off the property, please. Okay. okay. Private well, property. Sure. Uh, so it's a public sidewalk. Oh, yeah, we are cooperating. Thank you. Right onto the sidewalk. Yeah, there's no implication yeah. that we aren't uh, cooperating. Right onto the sidewalk. Can okay. stay there, please? Sure, yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, Jim, Jim has some questions for you. Again, I need you to stay right on the sidewalk. Yeah. Thank you very much. We actually checked with the city. The property line's actually right here. Also? That's good. Property line's actually right here. We are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis, and the nations will accept the new world order. David Rockefeller. We saw David Rockefeller and uh, the car in black at the, uh, beyond the hotel, and they have no, had no bodyguards. One of my friends shouted, hey, Rockefeller, and he turned back, uh, and he uh, was uh, afraid. <laughs> My name is Rene. I'm from uh, Manitoba. Drove about 26 hours to get here, uh, just to show my uh, that I'm against the Bilderbergers, just to fight for my freedoms, fight for my rights, uh, make sure that my children can grow up uh, in a free country. My name is Daniel Lestule, and uh, I've been uh, doing this for the last 15 years. Uh, I'm from Canada. I'm very proud of my country because, uh, as you can see, there are a lot of people covering the Bilderberg Conference. Last year. Uh, it took me 14 and a half hours to get to uh, Munich. I was pulled off the plane in Milan. I was pulled off the plane in Munich. They interrogated me four hours in both places. I was able to call a friend, a journalist in, uh, in Rome, as a result of his presence and others calling the Foreign Ministry Department in Italy. They backed off and they let me go. They basically told me that they'll keeping an eye on me 24 hours of the day. Uh, the little hotel where we were staying at, Jim and I, out of the 20 rooms, six were occupied, three by the CIA and three by the uh, German Secret Service. Uh, that's how serious these people are and that's how afraid they are of actually what we may be able to reveal and what we actually do reveal publicly about the Bilderberger intents. Daniel Estelin has covered the Bilderberg meetings in Europe and North America for more than 15 years. His book, Club Bilderberg, has been translated into more than 20 languages and is a global bestseller. Estelin has photographed many past Bilderberg meetings. Rockefeller frontman Henry Kissinger is always a key participant. Here you see the president of the CFR, Richard N. Haas, followed by vice chairman of Rothschild Europe, Franco Barnaby, who is speaking with Henry Kravitz. And behind them is Richard Holbrook, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations.
The head of Daimler Chrysler, Jürgen Eric Shrimp, arrives by helicopter. Here, the owner of the Washington Post, Donald Graham, escorts Indra Nui, the head of PepsiCo. Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands, whose father, Prince Bernhard, founded Bilderberg, is a leading figure in the group. Of course, globalist kingpin David Rockefeller, seen here with his bodyguard, James Ford, always attends. The then newly appointed World Bank Chief Paul Wolfowitz is photographed at Bilderberg 2005. It has been reported that Wolfowitz had attended previous meetings while still the Deputy Secretary of Defense, a violation of the Logan Act. Under the Logan Act, it is a felony offense for any member of the federal or state government to meet with members of a foreign government without the express authority and authorization of the President or Congress. Put simply, it is illegal for members of the government to meet secretly behind closed doors with foreign power brokers due to the problems of corruption and espionage that it breeds. For this reason, many prominent politicians attend, but their names do not appear on the official list. Despite the Logan Act, the governor of New York's name, George Pataki, does appear on the list, and we were able to catch the governor on tape walking with David Rockefeller at Brook Street. Multiple staff members inside Brook Street reported to us that Hillary Clinton attended for half a day. Several armored limos with diplomatic plates did arrive with police escorts and offloaded their passengers in the underground parking garage out of the sight of the press. Former World Bank President James Wolftonson sardonically stared at our cameras. They're upset about the fact that they're being exposed. Well, I'm sure they are. I mean, look at the tinted windows. Uh, they, they don't want to be seen. They don't want even anybody to know they're here. So I'm sure they're ticked, you know, and that's why we're here to try to expose them. Do you think if they were angry that they were on the front page of the local paper today, you think they're in there reading it right now, Jim? Uh, yes, but I don't think they're happy about it. They prefer nothing at all, no publicity. They pr prefer absolute secrecy. Yeah, you better look away. We're not your slaves. Did you get a list of the attendees and everything? Or not uh, no, I've asked for one under a slight variation of my name, and I don't know if I'll get it or not. Also, it could happen today. For the last three years, I get back to the hotel. And there's a copy there waiting for you. Well, you know, know, somebody who does not identify so I mean, I really, I'm not just not revealing the source. I don't know the source myself, uh, but a fact. Uh -huh because they want the Bilderberg letterhead on it and it makes a nice memento. Perfect. Alex? Yeah? That's Chalabi, eh? You think Chalabi? No, 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 I don't think, I know. It looked like Chalabi and it was a fat guy, yeah! That was Ahmed Chalabi? Yeah. Oh my God, then they're really gonna attack Iran. <laughs> Uh, over the last couple of years, they've been reeling with the amount of leakage that they've been experiencing, so it's getting harder and harder. But again, it will never get too hard for us because of the sources that we have inside are top notch sources. People who are actually working for them, the Secret Service, the second layer uh, people in the Bilderbergers, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the clerks, the, uh, the administrative office, they are there. They, you know, they are our eyes and ears, and uh, every time there's something out, we always get the information. That's uh, Francisco Pinto Valsamao. I think that's the queen. It's the queen. It's the queen. Oh my god, you can't kiss her hair. Here. You see her? Yes. Oh my god. The queen of Holland. What usually happens, uh, the Secret Service guys who are protecting the, uh, the Bilderberg delegates, uh, the staff, the cooks, the chefs, 
when they actually get to see and to hear what some of these uh, nasty people are talking about, uh, they're the first ones to look for us and the first ones to make sure that we get the information uh, from the meeting. We, uh, again, we're very rigorous with information that does come out. We double, triple and quadruple the uh, confirm the sources, make sure that all the information checks out. A lot of the stuff, the Bill and Burgess have planted information, make sure that you know this disinformation nullifies the, the, the accuracy of the reporting, which is why we never publish the first thing we hear. That looks like Rockefeller. The decisions that these people take, again, they not only decisions affect business community, they affect uh, politics, business, environment across the entire spectrum. And these decisions are made and taken by a very elite group of people behind closed doors this year at the Brook Street Hotel. We are not privy to these decisions. We're not allowed to know what they're talking about. But we'll definitely feel the consequences of these decisions over the next 12 months when events which apparently by accident seem to happen, in fact, have been planned right here this year at Brook Street Hotel between 8th and 11th of June. What does it do when you get 120 of the most powerful people in the world getting together to have meetings with government officials? I mean, that that's amazing. Well, it is. This is what I mean, is that they're planning the corporate agenda. They're not uh, planning the uh, democratic human journey agenda, in my opinion. Mussolini had a, a definition, is when the interests of the corporation take completely over from all other interests, and that's fascism. He said it should probably be called corporatism. Well, call it corporatism, call it fascism, call it neo-lib, neo -lib, neo There's a whole variety of political words, depending on which side of the stripe you come from, to start with, which describes the thing. But what they are describing is the complete end of democracy, the end of what matters to people, the end of what happens to the human journey. And for that reason, I think this is revolting. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here in Canada today to stand up against the Bilderberg Group that is attempting to get rid of the sovereignty of the United States. The truth of your world government has now been exposed. We know you are ruthless. We know you are evil. To David Rockefeller, to the Rothschild representatives here, to the Queen of the Netherlands, to all of you, we tell you, you are not our queens. You are not our kings. You are not our gods. We do not belong to you. We are not your slaves. We stand as free humans have stood since the beginning of time against the strong men, against the thugs, against the bullies. We will defeat your world government. We will defeat world taxation. We will defeat your control grid. God is on our side. I stand before the creator of the universe. And I ask the creator of the universe, as our founding fathers did in 1776, to leave God and direct us and to give us the power and the foresight and the understanding and the will to stand against your entire agenda, including your final plan of world population reduction of 80% that Henry Kissinger penned in 1973. Why do you put mercury in the vaccines, stand sodium fluoride in the water? Why? Why do you put cancer viruses in the vaccines? Why have you used depleted uranium now in four separate nations? You're arrogant. You have the sickness that elites have had throughout history in their literal and, in some cases, figurative ivory towers. You believe that you're invincible. You will and you are failing now. Your new world order will fall. Humanity will defeat you. The answer to 1984 is 1776. Yeah. 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 Bilderberg is an elite organization and the way it works, the, the, the protocol of the meetings is the staff, after they're vetted out, they're told exactly how they're supposed to uh, behave themselves, meaning that they can never address the attendees, they can never speak to them unless they're spoken to first, they can never look them in the eye. They have to approach them from the right side, the people who are right-handed, and from the left side, the people who are left-handed. They can never look them straight on, and uh, needless to say, all the information that is being spoken at during the conferences is under no circumstances allowed to come out. That's what they're told. They're threatened with uh, not being able to find another job anywhere in the sector if they reveal any information to the press. Richard Holbrook? Ambassador Richard Holbrook thought the peasantry wouldn't recognize him if he took a stroll off the grounds of Brook Street. 